السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته finally after I don't know twenty um, something videos we finally have a response and uh, I mean late's better than never right but CP you've only responded to two out of the seventy um, lies that I've caught you on so you have a lot of catching up to do but you know what makes me happy about his response video is that finally you get to see CP going at my arguments trying to defend himself and now you get to decide if he did a good job in defending himself or not he tries to refute my points at the best of his ability get this though I thought that I was doing something with my videos I thought that I was taking him down but it turns out that this was all according to CP's plan. He he actually tricked me into making videos about him. The prophet did not say that. The Christian prince he tricked the guy. <laughs> I tricked you too? And I made you make videos about me? Yeah, that's right. Uh, CP actually tricked me into making 30-something um, videos about him. Now, for those that don't know what's going on, I initially uh, released a video about Christian Prince in which he lies to a Muslim using a weak hadith and causes that Muslim to leave Islam. Now, um, the hadith basically goes, There is no one whom Allah will admit to paradise, but Allah will marry him to 72 wives, two from Huris and 70 from his inheritance from the people of hell, all of whom will have desirable front passages and he will have a male member that never becomes flaccid, right? Now, I've made three accusations against Christian Prince in this video and I'll be showing you how Christian Prince failed to respond to all three of these. Here's my first accusation. And now he described to us that they are very beautiful to the point you will be crazy when you see their boobs and their vagina. Excuse my language. Okay, so first of all, the verse, excuse me, the hadith doesn't say that. The hadith doesn't say that you're going to go crazy um, while looking at their uh, parts. Now, it may come as a surprise to you, but CP in his 23-minute response ignored this point completely. So, what does that say? The second accusation. Why does, like, what do you think about why those women, Allah will take them from hell? Why they are coming from hell? Because they're the, cause they're the dirtiest. Because they are what? The dirtiest. Because they are hookers. They are they are yeah. they are expert. Yeah. They are expert in sex. So Allah will choose for you mm -hmm. from the mm. from the warehouse of hell the best of the <laughs> hookers who they are very good in all the skills of sex. We don't have to give details. This has nothing to do with them being good in sex or anything like that. Rather, um, the Arabic specifically states. Um, that these will be good women because the example that is brought is the wife of the Pharaoh who is of course um, well praised as we know for being a good person um, CP is aware of this he can see the Arabic he reads the Arabic and yet he's referring to these women as hookers in order to make the image of heaven in Islam to look as twisted as possible. Now, CP attempts to actually respond to this one. So let's check out his response. He said that you will inherit from the people of the hellfire women. Okay, what is special about those women? Hmm, maybe education, no. Maybe they speak languages, no. Maybe they are good in computers, no. Your prophet said that they have nice vagina and they have nice boobs. So if those are not hookers, what they will be then? You see, when you say to me, I'm going to give you women, they have nice boobs and nice vagina. Isn't it this is about hookers because now their job, we know what exactly what they will do. So you liar, you say, it doesn't say that. But anyone, even he's a blind, he can see that because you're a prophet, describe what kind of women they are. He did not say they are good women who have good honor, no. He did not say they are good ethic people, no. He did not, they are, they are already in hellfire, you idiot. And what 
is good about them two things only only two things do you see it the front is something you desire their boobs the vagina so the first and most obvious distortion is that the report speaks nothing about breasts CP keeps hammering this point again and again and yet there is no mention of breasts in the hadith secondly hookers do not have desirable front passages I have no idea why you have this opinion CP um, hookers tend to have gonorrhea syphilis crabs and other uh, infections in their private parts so I don't know how this uh, is a point for your uh, funky interpretation I mean, uh, to be honest, I do not see how um, this report has anything to do with hookers because if you think about it, the two dirtiest things in existence are the private parts of hookers and the imagination of Christian Prince. Now, to be fair, the narration doesn't speak about the characteristics of these women. Um, it doesn't speak about their sexual abilities. It doesn't speak about their goodness and their character. However, if we take Islam uh, as a general context, the Quran, the Sunnah, we generally see the trend that good believing women are the ones that end up in heaven. So this narration is speaking about those good believing monotheistic women. They are the ones that end up going to heaven and their husbands who are corrupt who are pagans who are disbelievers end up going to hell and that's why um, the narration refers to them as being inherited now keep in mind this hadith isn't even authentic in the first place but more on that later in any case cp is distorting the report based on his projections the only way for it to make any sense and for this to have to do with hookers is with him twisting it in this fashion adding the word um boobs in the report and the report doesn't say boobs in all honesty i mean there's something definitely wrong with this man so my friend your heaven is heaven of hookers and you yourself you are a hooker because the man who sleep with hookers he is a hooker too mm, yeah all right well cp um you see sleeping with a hooker doesn't make someone a hooker uh sleeping with a hooker makes someone um i don't know a customer or something it doesn't make you a hooker um in any case again i don't accept the hadith so and now we can move on to the last and most important point. This is God. Okay, so let's check out the hadith again. Notice in the bottom left side of the screen, it says, this is a la'if, this is a weak hadith. All right, let's go back to Christian Prince. <clears throat> you cannot see the word la'if. You cannot see that this is a rejected hadith. He has purposefully hid that away from the caller he doesn't want the caller to be aware that he's quoting a weak hadith now i know christian prince doesn't care about that he will quote weak hadiths and he says that there's no issue with quoting weak hadiths but then why are you showing why are you showing the caller that the hadith has been great as weak what's really interesting is cp avoids my accusation i accused him of course of removing the part that says that the hadith is weak he has never responded to that point however he has more to say check it out well anyone can go right now and search in youtube he will find this guy his name sheikh hamza and he explained to the little one like you that the if hadith is accepted but there, there's there's an attack on weak hadith in our time we, we, a weak hadith is, is anywhere from a B minus to a D minus, all right? A Hassan hadith is, is a B to an A minus. And then a Sahih hadith, I'm just using so, a language you can understand. An A minus... Uh, Fifi, he is using a language you can understand. Just remember that, okay? So I hope you can understand this. I mean, it's not hard for you. You are smart. A language you can understand, you little one. 
You claim that you are a Muslim. All of you, you are a bunch of potatoes. Claim to know, but you are the last one to know. The same as Muhammad. His wife was a cheater on him, and he is the last one to know. Continue, Mr. Sheikh Hamza. This is like a, 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 a Sahih Hadith is from an A to an A+. Plus to 100%. Mutawatir is 100%. Al-Bukhari is like 98%, 99%. Muslim and Bukhari, 99%. Uh, Sahih Muslim, 97%. By the way, CP, why are you even quoting Hamza Yusuf's opinion on this topic? He isn't an expert in the field. Maybe you should quote Imam Murrah next time. So, the, the, uh, a weak hadith is not thrown out. <laughs> Just like a professor doesn't throw out a paper that, that gets a D-. minus. It didn't flunk. It, it didn't funk, you idiot. It didn't funk, you idiot. Yeah, this clip is kind of funny. Hamza Yusuf says flunk, which means fail he didn't say funk funk is a type of music but uh, i'm i'm the idiot right out <laughs> just like a professor doesn't throw out a paper that that gets a d minus it didn't flunk it passed and so when the ulama say it's a weak hadith it passed it passed this is why it's called weak you donkey weak it means it have a rank this is why they call it weak you are stupid you are officially stupid. Weak is a rank of the Sahih Hadith, which means, let us say, as he said, he explained to you, there's A, B, C, D. But all of them, they, they pass, which means they are true and said by the Prophet. There is no proof against that they, the Prophet say. This is why it have a rank, you donkey. And I apologize for all donkeys in the world to say, the word donkey because I should not insult donkeys. Listen carefully what he said. Maybe you are slow. All right, CP, let's actually listen to what Hamza Yusuf has to say in the full context. It's called a hadith da'if because it, it's, it, the, the margin of error is greater than in a hasan or a sahih. So how did the ulama deal with that? The ulama dealt with it by saying that for fabail al-amad, those actions that are virtuous, uh, you could do use a weak hadith if it was a virtuous action and it didn't relate to a hukum. In aqidah, the opinion of the Ash'ari and the Maturidi is the hadith has to be mutawatir. Oh, so Hamza Yusuf isn't even talking about weak hadiths in general. He's talking about fawa'il al-a'mal. Yeah, so you see the part that CP left out is Hamza Yusuf talking about Fadal al-A'mal. So what are Fadal al-A'mal? So Fadal al-A'mal are matters that are already established in Islam, but the report speaks up the benefits and rewards of doing that. Now, for example, um, an example of Fadal al-A'mal would be, let's say hypothetically, there's a hadith that says, um, giving to charity for a week cleanses you from sins for that week. Now, this hadith hypothetically is a weak hadith, and it is established in Islam that charity is a recommended action. Now, you do not know that this hadith is said by the Prophet, peace be upon him. However, since charity is already established in Islam, you are recommended to do charity based on other hadiths and this hadith. So that's how Fawal al-Amal works. Now, Hamza Yusuf himself clearly states that weak hadiths cannot be used in ideological matters. And this hadith, according to Christian Prince's interpretation, is an ideological matter, since he's arguing that all bad hookers go to heaven. So no, evil hookers going to heaven is not a part of Fadha al-A'mal. And yes, CP, the source that you have provided is refuting you. And now that I'm done with the three main points and CP's, well, actually two main points, and CP's responses to them, I can get to um, some of the other points that he's mentioned that I feel should be refuted. Um, one of those arguments that he's posed is this clip by Hamza Yusuf. In other words, it's something that cannot be proven to not have been said by the Prophet. Did you hear your liar? You said, I did lie, and you said this is rejected. Hadith, which is weak, there's no way to prove it's not being said by the Prophet. This is why it's given a rank of weak, you idiot liar. So who is the liar here? 
Hamza Yusuf is actually referring to the concept of proving a negative. Now, yes, he's arguing that you can never prove um, that the Prophet never said something. However, there is no conflict between that and the idea that there is insufficient evidence for the attribution of this hadith to the Prophet, peace be upon him. I hope that makes sense. If you didn't quite get it, CP, then please do re-loop this section of the video a few times. Anyways, here are some more uh, clips that I felt needed to be addressed. And why through centuries this hadith is written since when? Why nobody says this is rejected, throw in the garbage, why it's in the book? Actually, it was weakened by Ibn Qaysarani in the Dhakhira around a thousand years ago. And who is the one who make a hadith sahih or correct or rejected? People who came thousand of years after Muhammad? <laughs> like there's a guy, his name is Alabani. You know, me myself, I witnessed, I, like, uh, I, I, I witnessed him, he died just a few years ago. This guy now is coming to correct and say sahih and weak. I mean, it's stupid. This statement shows CP's ignorance, since the grading of hadiths has been going on for centuries. And as I've demonstrated seconds ago, Ibn Qaysarani graded this hadith as well as others. Mr. Fifi, as long you accept Sahih hadith, why you did not mention to, uh, <clears throat> to apostate a prophet that your prophet, he said, that the sun set in murky water? And it is Sahih, not only Sahih, it's Sahih chain, which means both. Hmm. Why you did not quote that for him, you liar, coward, as long you refuse only the if? Why you don't accept this one? Hmm? Is this one the if? Is it the if? Is it the if? In the previous clip, CP was arguing that I'm hypocritical because I rejected the hadith that was referred to as Sahih by Al Albani. Now, I have a surprise for you, CP. I'm not bound to the gradings of Al Albani. I'm actually a qualified student of hadith that has the ability to judge hadiths for himself. And I've proven that and I've shown the mistake in the report that was quoted in the Apostate Prophet video. So I'm going to link that in the description for those that want to check it out. And finally, on to the biggest lie in this video. Ibn Majah say it is Sahih. Mr. Farid, who have high school, he said it's not Sahih. For sure he knew. Now Ibn Majah doesn't comment on this hadith. Why are you Muslim even writing the hadith if it's a lie? If this is a lie, why it's in a book, it's called Sahih Ibn Majah. Uh, guys, the name of the book, the correct hadith. The book isn't called Sahih Ibn Majah. It's called Sunan Ibn Majah. And here's a little clip of CP um, slipping up. They are Sahih. There is six authentic writers of hadith. And this is one of them. Sunan Ibn Majah. And there you have it, guys. Um, I'm really happy, CP, that you've given me this opportunity to shatter the aura of invincibility that you have around you. Habibi, thank you. Please do more. Um, you have 68 videos, maybe, I think, it's, I think it's up to maybe 71. I think there is a video that came out yesterday. You have a lot of work to do, Habibi. Keep going at it. There are some people that are being affected by my videos. So you need to, you need to keep on doing what you're doing. I'll see you guys in the next one. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You little you wanna refute me? Me? You're right.